Uh, some of the big precedent transactions, not, not ones that we were involved in or I was involved in, but are, are sort of markers of where this market is going. Uh, the Delta Blue Carbon Project in, in Sindh province in Pakistan is mangrove restoration and protection, 350,000 hectares producing 140 million uh, tons over its lifespan. A project that was funded and ultimately bought by Microsoft, Respira and Trafigura. Uh, the big trading houses are getting in to this space and starting to carry some of that early risk. Uh, Wildlife Works, founded by a, a friend and colleague, uh, Mike Kaczynski, privately funded effort focused primarily on conservation rather than restoration work. But they have a $200 million line of credit from Hartree to fund their project development. We're starting to see signs of mobilization of a lot more capital uh, into this space and you know, solving a lot of the, of the, the performance and operational problems of these organizations. So, so let me just finish with a couple of... of um, what I think are going to drive the nature of the issues that are going to drive the nature of the sector in the next, uh, the next three to five years. The first is getting away from these little plots of land where you, as, organ as companies, they fly below the radar and work with NGOs and communities, but they don't engage the government. You have to work, to get to this kind of scale, the sector has to work with governments, has to recognize, as people found in Indonesia, at some point the government will turn around and say, hold on all you private developers, this land all belongs to us, where's our take? Where are our taxes? Where's our revenue share? Um, and if you don't give it to us, we'll just shut down your project. Right, so the transition to jurisdictional-based approaches is quite well established. Protocols and rule sets now for developing projects have been around for 15 or 20 years. There's one global registry that supplies 70% of the, of the credits it's called VERA. Um, addressing and clarifying issues of land title Easier for forest lands, which is usually either public or private land. For mangrove areas and coastal zones, there's often real ambiguity about who actually owns the mangroves who, who's responsible, uh, either on a government or private landowner perspective. Uh, we need big upgrades on ground from what's primarily ground-based direct measurement of trees to satellite and drone-based systems. There's a lot of interest in integration of drone and satellite data at the moment to get very high-quality carbon mapping. There's companies like Earth Daily, GeoTree in, in, in London and, and Pachama who are all investing in this massive upgrade in infrastructure to, to measure that. And there's a lot of interest in how we develop fi uh, financial products and, and insurance products so that if there's project risk or there's project failure, the, the, the credits that are supposed to be produced or the assets are, are reasonably well protected. And it's mostly a self-insurance uh, mechanism at the moment for the sector. Um, the structure of the buying... Um, you know, on, on the one hand, a lot of that infrastructure has been in place for a, for a long time. It's well established. There are independent registries, third party audit, and high levels of transparency. I've been asked more times than I care to count why blockchain can't solve all the problems of the carbon markets, and it's just not needed. Uh, it doesn't solve any problems that aren't solved better by a static registry, um, uh, but that isn't stopping people trying uh, to use blockchain. Um, that infrastructure is well in place. Uh, the buyers in the market, uh, you know, the big buyers like the oil and gas companies have built big in-house sophisticated technical teams to do a lot of the buying. So, so that's changing the narrative a lot in terms of the quality assurance. Um, I always joke, it's, well, as much as it's a new commodity, in many ways it's, it's nowhere near as commodified as coal or oil or, or other large commodities are. When buyers come in, they want to look very closely at the details of each individual project. It's more like a wine appellation than a, a pure commodity. So they have very specific requirements in terms of how they're bought. Um, investment due diligence is, is extreme, very high levels of scrutiny, because the companies that are buying these products are telling the public markets primarily that they're meeting their ESG goals and responsibilities by investing in these projects, that communities will benefit, that there's revenue sharing, um, and then lastly, lots of activities by, the, by the, the larger trading houses to get into this space and build these books up in anticipation of the demands. <laughs>